My name is Kyneton and today we are going to be starting our first programming lesson in 2019 Java programming course. So this is really going to be easier than C++. Remember I'm taking three classes, Python, C++ and Java. So three of them and we have the easiest is Python followed by Java followed by C++. So if you've done some part of C++ before now, you know that Java is really easy at least relative to C++. So what it takes is consistency. Just be consistent and learn every week or every three days, you will get to know it. Just click on the subscribe button so that you get notified when I make new lessons. So just subscribe to my channel and be sure that in four months time, you will be a good Java programmer. So that is one thing you need to do. So let's go ahead to run this program. This is going to be your first program. And I'm actually not going to, I'm going to run it and then I'm going to, so this is, where we are starting, great Java, I've displayed it, and you can do the same thing. But right now, this is your first program, I'm going to close it, and let's start from the scratch. So let me just go ahead to close this project. And what you should do is that you need to install Eclipse, right? If you already have Eclipse, fine. If you don't have, just go ahead to download Eclipse. It's easy to download and it's free. Just go to Google, type Eclipse download, and just download Eclipse JEE. -E. So I show you on my desktop, so this is the Eclipse, Eclipse JEE 2018-09. So open Eclipse and then go to File and simply go to New and choose Project, right? If you choose Project, come to Java Project and click on Next. Give your project a name, let's call it Tutorial 1. And then go Next and then go ahead to Finish. So at this point, we have created Tutorial 1 and inside it actually we have nothing. All these, you don't have to worry about them. So what you are going to do next is right click on this and say new and just choose new class. Now pay attention to this. This is your first class and it has to contain the main method. So a class in Java should contain the main methods. Not all class, but the class that will make your program run. All right, so let's give I specify on this checkbox, as you can see, which method stop will you like to create? I would like to create the main method. If you don't create it, this program is not going to run. All right, so let's leave it in the default package. Every other thing is the same, except that we, we are going to give a name to the class. If you don't give a name, then you can't complete it. So let's also call it to tutorial. Now the name of this file I'm creating is tutorial.java. And when I create tutorial.java, it creates this file that says public class tutorial. So all Java files are classes. I'm going to explain it later when we are going to be talking about object-oriented programming. But for now, know that you need to create a class and choose the main method. If you forget to choose the main method, then type in this by yourself. At least that will be something that will make you get used to having the main method in your program. All right. Two things we are going to learn today. The first one is system.in and system.out. So these are two things we are going to learn. So basically, we are going to learn about inputs and outputs. As an aside, I would like to show you how to add a comment. For instance, you want to add your name as a person that wrote this program. You simply use double slash, just like in C++. It's amazing that if you are learning C++, you can actually learn Java side by side provided you are not going to be confused. So you can just say program to display Java on the screen. All right, so let's do this together. So we are going to be using system.out. We are going to be using system.in. So this is the two things we are going to be learning today. And those are the two most powerful things in Java, especially when you are wanting to, when you want to interact with user to get it input from the user and also display something to the user. So system, and somehow we are going to learn something called the scanner. So let's get started first. System.out is used to display data to the output. So what I can say, is, I can write is system dots. So now when you click on, when you type O or you start typing, you can see some menu comes out, it's called IntelliSense. It tries to, to try to determine what you want to type and it provides you some help. So 
system.out.println so print line and we are going to enclose in double quotes all right so now we want to display java to the output so the first thing i'm going to do is to copy this line and paste it several times because that is what we'll use to display java to the output all right so let's start I'll start by displaying J to the output. So let's go ahead to start. So I would like to start from, from here. So let's use the hash key. Oh, hash. Oh, let's start with this. Let's get it started. So this is going to be the top part of our J, right? Good. So let's continue with the uh, this time. All right, good. So let's continue downwards. So, so this is basically an easy part, so, but I want you to do it because right now I'm going to display just J and then I would like you to complete the remaining part of it. Alright, so I think we've run out of, alright, so let's do it this way. Alright, so maybe we can just do it this way. All right, so fine. We can take all this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead to run this code and let's see what happens. Just right click and just say run as and choose Java application. If you do that, it works fine. So it displays in this place. Normally you can actually drag the console downwards to anywhere you want. For me, I like having it under the program I'm writing. So basically, this is how you display something to the output. So if you want to display your name, so you can easily do the same thing. And one thing you need to remember is anything you are displaying, you need to enclose in quotes, especially that is if it is a string. So you can display your name. This is the name of my channel. Now this is system.out.print line, if I run it, it's actually going to display in one line. So let me just let me use system.out.print. Now we also have print. When you use print, it actually displays, but it does not add a new line. So let's call it another test, and then I'm going to run this code. And now what actually happens at this point is I'm displaying system um, another test in one line and now there is no new line at the end. So what it means is that if I copy this and paste it and run it, you see that everything attaches, you can see here. So system.out.print line adds a new line at the end of the line. System.out.print does not add a new line at the end of the line. So just play around. There are other things you can actually use, but these are the key ones. So if you type system.out, you could see, you can see flush, you can see um, append, and you can also see other things. So for now, let's focus on system.out.print and system.out.print line. All right, so let's now go to see how we can get input from the user. If you want input from the user, you use system.in. I think that is very intuitive and easy to understand. So if you say system.in, what is going to happen is that the, the, the system is going to wait for the user system.in.read, sorry, all right. The system is going to wait for the user to enter an item. When the user enters an item, that item has to be stored in some variable, right? So let's say the user enters 50. It will have to store it in a variable. A variable is a memory location that holds data. So the user enters a data, let's say 50 or 100, you need to save it in a variable. So we are having an, an error here because we need to specify a variable to put uh, to place whatever the user enters. So let's use a variable called int i. So as you can see, int i and semicolon at the end. All right, so uh, this system that 
in the street requires um, exception handling. So the question is, if an error happens, an error occurs, what is what are you going to do? And so you can have uh, the, the, the menu comes out here, so simply surround with try catch block, right? So choose surround with try catch block. So it's something Java does to actually help you make your code uh, effective. All right, so at this point, I'm going to say i is equal to system.in.read.read. So when, so we have this error here, it says, remove i in all assignments, value of local variable not used. Okay, so let's actually do, declare inside int i, all right. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead to run this code and let's see what happens. So if I if I run it now at the end of the code, at the end of the line, it expects us to enter an input. So if I enter something, let's say seven, nothing happens. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to display what the user enters to the output. So if the user enters seven, I want the system to say you entered seven. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say system.out.print line. I'm going to say you entered. And now I'm going to attach whatever the user enters and we called it i, right? But the challenge now is i is declared inside here, meaning that it's not available on the outside. So I'm going to specify i outside the try hash block. Alternatively, we could move this into the block. So just copy this, uh, copy and paste it inside the try block. So later when we discuss error handling, we are going to talk about this. So if I say I, all the errors is going to go away. So what is going to happen when we say int i is equal to system in the tree? When this code executes, the user is going to enter an input that is expected to be an integer. That input is going to be assigned to a variable i, and then the system is going to say you entered i. So let's run it and actually see how it works. I'm going to make a little change here so that we have a new line. So if I run this code, now I'm going to enter, let's say 45, and you can say, you can see it says you entered 52, quite strange. So let's run again, 100, you entered 49, so, the strange behavior. Now we are going to correct this by initializing i to int i is equal to system dot in the street. Good. Okay. So I think it has to do with my keyboard. So let me try a second time. So let's see. Twenty. You entered fifty. Straight. All right, so let's see what happens. Let's see. Okay, so we, we fix this in the next tutorial, but uh, because I need to explain to you about using a scanner to read. Okay, so another thing you need to learn about is the scanner. Right, so what is a scanner? It's kind of like an object that you use to read input from the user. So I'm going to take all these for now. And then we can use a scanner to do the, the reading. So let's say we have, we, we create a new scanner because before you use a scanner, you need to create it. So it says scanner is equal to new scanner. If you create a new scanner, you need to give it a, 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 an argument or a parameter called system.in. Right. So at this point, we've created, sorry, we've created a scanner. Right? Good. So 
So we are ready to use the scanner to now read. But we have an error because this scanner is in a package called java.util. So if you click if you if you put, place your mouse on the arrow, you can you can see that it gives you some options. But I'm going to go to the end of the line, drop it down, and uh, see scanner sc is equal to new scanner. So we are creating a scanner object called let's use it let's call it the same name scanner scanner is equal to new scanner. And I'm going to say import java.util. So the next thing I'm going to do is to now use scanner use the scanner to read from the input. So I can simply say scanner dot next uh, line or nice dot nice scanner dot nice. So scanner dot nice gives us a string. So I can easily declare a string and whatever is given from the input will be assigned into uh, the name variable. So what I'm going to do is to display whatever the user uh, enter system.out.print and I'm going to say welcome because I expect the user to enter his name. I'm going to say welcome plus name. So just to make it a bit fancy, I'm going to come here and say please enter your name. Enter your name. So at this point, I'm going to run this program and let's see what happens. So you can see, please enter your name and I enter my name, kind son. So you can see, welcome, kind son. So basically, a scanner is better to use than using system.in. So how to use a scanner, you create a new scanner and give it a parameter system.in and then you use scanner.nice to get the, the, the string from the user and then you assign it to a variable that you've created. So I hope you've come to understand how to use the system.in, system.out, and also the scanner object. So in the next lesson, we are going to now look at various data types that are available in Java. I would like to thank you for viewing, and remember to click on subscribe to subscribe and get notified when I make new lessons.